Hi, welcome to another video. I'm Lauren, and today I wanted to try doing an acrylic pour seascape. If you've seen my previous video, and I'll put a link here up in the corner for my acrylic pour landscape, you saw that I actually managed to create a landscape type painting using acrylic pour combined with like kind of palette knife painting techniques. So I wanted to try the same thing today, only I was going to do a seascape. So just like uh, with my previous video, I will be working on an 11 by 14 cradle board wood panel. This has about a half inch depth and I have primed it with gesso. It is dry and it's ready to paint. Also, I will be using my variety of kind of unorthodox tools for this painting, just like last time, my usual pelt knife, as well as some of my other tools I'll be experimenting with. And I have as a reserve my straw in case I decide to do some blowing. So I wanted to do like a kind of an oceanscape, maybe a little bit of a wave in the foreground, and I was thinking also of trying to do like a palm tree sticking up. We'll see how it goes, see how it works. I will list all the colors I'll be using in the description because at this very moment I'm not actually sure what I will be using, but I'll make sure and list it all in the description if you're curious about the colors, about the paint recipe I use, all that fun stuff. I'll have everything in the description, and with that, let's get to painting. Alright, like I usually do, I'm going to start with what's going to be my sky portion, and I'm going to start with a very dark ultramarine blue on the top. Just a little bit, because I don't want it to be too dark. I'm going to put a line of cobalt blue, it's a little bit paler. And then I'm going to put some of my light blue permanent here. I want a little bit more of this, because I want more of this in my sky overall, and I'll also incorporate some up here. Alright, next I'm going to go over with a heavy coat of white, and then I'll mix it all in with my palette knife. All right, so I got the basis for my sky in place. The next thing I'm going to do is start laying down colors for what is going to be the ocean. I'm using many of the same colors I used in the sky, but I want a stronger concentration of these colors for the ocean to be darker. So I use ultramarine blue at the horizon, along with cobalt blue below it. It might be more than I want, but oop, whoops, it's way more than I wanted. I got way too much green, so I'm going to kind of scoop it off, because <laughs> that is way too much green. I'm going to put in some turquoise now. Interspersing it with my blue and the um, excessive amount of green. I'm going to use some more of my light blue permanent down here at the bottom, where I want it to be a little paler. Interspersing a little bit up in here as well. And I also want to use one of my favorite colors. This is PBO Iridescent Green Blue. Adds a lovely iridescent shimmer. And I'll add touches more of the darker blues here in some of these areas, but I don't want too much. And then towards the bottom I'll also add a little bit of white. And some here and there up in the top portions as well. And also, I want to go ahead and put in some sand down here along the bottom edge. I'm going to use the unbleached titanium white for this. I'll put in a little bit of metallic gold for some sparkling highlights on the sand. Some of the darker sand, I'll put in a little bit of the metallic bronze as well. Don't want too much of this though. Alright, I think that's enough paint. Let's see if we can make a straight horizon line and start making some ocean. All right, that is looking quite nice. I want some more kind of foam action on the surface of the waves. I think I want it to be a bit darker here at the horizon as well. And I want some more kind of foam here along the shoreline. So I'm gonna put a bead of white here along the tip of the sand, kind of shaping where I want the wave to kind of be. What I also want to do is darken it underneath that line if I can. So I'm gonna to try to gently run a bead of copper, or I'm sorry, bronze underneath the wave, just here along the sand. And let me put some ultramarine here along the horizon, see if we can kind of make that a bit darker. Unfortunately, it's probably not going to be even, but that's all right. All 
I'm going to use some light up here in some of these areas to kind of create the illusion of other waves happening in the distance. Pretty good. I'm not quite happy here with the way the sand came out, but I also need to torch it, I think, before I go any further. So let me do that now. I think one thing I want to do, I want to try and feather out the foam here a bit. So I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to use my straw to kind of blow out some of the white and try to make some more foam shapes. That looks much better. It's more what I was going for. I might even do the same here on some of these waves to kind of give them a little bit more life. Let's see how that works. Definitely like that. It's adding a little bit more movement to them. It makes it look a little bit more dynamic. One thing they do need though is a little bit more dark maybe at the base of the wave. So. Let's see, first of all, if I can make a better horizon line. Somewhat. <laughs> and then with some of this extra blue on the edge of my knife. See if I can just come in here. Kind of. Do like a base here at the waist. I'm going to try to delicately move that up into the wave a little bit. Use my straw to kind of smooth it. That looks better. Hmm. What I might do to fix this horizon is I might put in some like distant maybe uh, hills or mountains you see in the distance and that will help kind of disguise the unevenness of my horizon. Let me do that real quick. So I'm going to use some iridescent blue black some of my favorite purple mix and let's see what we can do about this I don't want them to be super dark I just more like want the hint of color kind of helping hold this in and disguise some of the unevenness of my horizon I don't even want them stretching all the way across. I just want it to look kind of like a bay coming in between these distant island. My light, I think, is probably coming from this angle. So it's going to be a little bit more shadowy here and here. I'll start mixing these up with the sky that's underneath and then determine what else I need to do. It actually works out well because it kind of looks like we got a little bit of highlight here going on at the base of the mountains. I think I like that quite a bit. Might need a bit more dark over here. Let me try to borrow some. I'll just paste it in over here. Kind of coming up under here and scoop it out. You can get some of the excess. Might have to just plop some down actually. Oh, right, I'm looking at that quite a bit. I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a little white off to the side here. Run the edge of my knife through it. And try to kind of draw in a distinct kind of shoreline here along the base of this formation. Yeah, liking that quite a lot. All right. 
I almost feel like I might need just a hint of the dark right in here to suggest maybe the suede and or this one are crashing over a rock. Okay, and probably wants a similar one over here on the other side. Maybe like right in here. Then let's get some more white out here using my knife again. I want to create the illusion of sea foam kind of snaking around the bases of these guys and splashing up over them. Some of the water here actually running over the edge of the rock. Try to do the same over here. All right. I think these rocks also want maybe just a hint of highlight. Not much, but enough to make them stand out. So I'm going to use slightly different color. This is my uh, PBO Blue Mix. And I'm just going to kind of sprinkle it on here as highlight. A little bit more white here maybe. Let's see if I can fluff these waves a bit more. Well, I was thinking of doing a palm tree, but I almost think I'm just going to leave it like it is. I like the way it came out here along the shore, the rocks. Yeah, I think I'll leave it. All right, let me show you a close-up. So here is the shoreline. You can see there's a little bit of lacing, not a lot, but enough you can kind of see some detail of what's supposed to be the foam here from the wave crashing over the sand. And then here, detail of one of the rocks and the wave crashing over it, kind of trailing off into some swirly water. And over here, my bigger rock and bigger wave with its action. And then our serene, peaceful looking distance. So that's the wet result. Next, I'll show you the dry result. All right, here is the finished seascape. Now, off camera, I did a couple things that I did not record. Uh, one of which was to add some iridescent silver here to the mountains, which you can see picking up in the light. And also the rocks in the foreground. I felt like they needed a little bit more highlight, so I came in afterwards and touched them up, but I did not have my camera out at the time. And another thing I fixed is, you may have noticed I had some odd blotches of color in the sky. So I had to come in after it was dry and uh, paint them over with white, let that dry, and then come over with my original colors for the sky and kind of patch it up. But it came out really nice and you can hardly tell. So I'm happy. But yeah, so some detail of the waves here. You can see the really neat little cell action that we got. It kind of really does look like seafoam. with the turquoise kind of bled into it too there it's pretty and then my rocks with their little waves and the foaminess and the mountains even the sky has a little bit of movement in it even though it's kind of subdued it has some movement to it which is really pretty but yeah that's it Overall, I'd say this one came out very, very nice, very calm and pretty. So that's the painting. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time. Bye!